Professor Kalspin has since joined the University of Buckingham, the UK's oldest private university, where he's developed a new course which teaches students about the perils of woke culture. He spoke to ADH's Fred Paul in London recently and says the young people of today could usher in the end of our culture that's been built on enlightenment values. Essentially, the values of what I call cultural liberalism, free speech, uh, equal treatment, objective truth, all of that is in danger, mainly because of the rise of a new generation that doesn't believe as strongly in those views and privileges other values, namely uh, equal outcomes uh, between identity groups and also um, not psychologically harming or, or in the most microscopic way members of those groups. Those are more important values than those older value, the enlightenment values. And, and as they become the majority in the workforce and the voters, uh, they have the capacity to overturn that long enlightenment tradition. So Professor Kaufman calls it a shift from cultural liberalism to cultural socialism. The most defining difference being that liberalism puts the focus on equal opportunity, while socialism puts it on unequal opportunity to force equal outcomes. But I guess it's this shift from equal treatment but unequal outcomes to you know, unequal treatment to get equal outcomes, right? Yes. So you're using the same term, word, equality, but you're changing it from sort of a process and procedure to something that is an end in itself. And that is the shift that I call a shift from cultural liberalism to cultural socialism. And then we're in, so we're in a, a period where cultural socialism becomes the dominant value in institutions and amongst young people. Uh, and that's kind of what we're fighting against. Yeah, and cultural socialism is a race to the bottom. I can't remember who said it, but someone once said, um, if everyone is free, then they are not equal, and if everyone is equal, then they are not free. Exactly, and so we're trading one set of values that emphasizes freedom as more important than equal outcomes to the other set of values that says, if you've got any race gap, gender gap in incomes and anything, then you've obviously, we've, we're gonna have to re-engineer society, and we're gonna have to restrict your freedom to speak, to, to, to get a job, to have meritocracy in order to achieve these targets, right? So that's the difference. Professor Kaufman told Fred that the threat to free speech at our universities is coming not just from the top down. On the one hand, you have the punishment apparatus, which is the what I call a vertical uh, from the institution, uh, you know, firing you, punishing you, whatever. But then you've also got, I think, arguably more important is the horizontal peer-to-peer -peer, um, ostracism, peer pressure, uh, not hiring, not promoting, not publishing, etc. Uh, that is this really is bad. For, yeah, essentially, you will not get published if you are taking a view that is, you know, if you're gender critical and you try to hold a conference at a university, uh, you will be known as the person who is that troublemaker and, you, and people will sort of move away from you. You're kind of radioactive. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that social dynamic of conformity, which is so important. Yeah, I think things are pretty bad. I mean, how bad are they? Probably three and four um, social, uh, conservative social scientists in Australia, the UK, US, um, would self-censor in research, teaching, and discussions. Three quarters. Um, they share, and, and almost 70% are afraid of losing job or reputation. Unbelievable. Three quarters are self-censoring and what is it? Over 70% are worried about losing their jobs or reputation. That is a problem. We need to stop mucking around here. We need to tie the funding of universities in Australia to metrics of diversity of worldview and perspective.